Welcome to another video, welcome to another additive synth video. Um, anyone who's been following this channel for a little while will realize that the next statement's not really a big shock, but I found some more space, so I added some more features. So this is just a quick little um, overview of the, the new features. One thing that uh, helped this along was I've got rid of the Arduino call to set up the analog output. Turned out that used about half a K of, RAM, of flash and I replaced it with direct calls to the registers which is two lines of code. So for anyone in the future wanting to do any analog out stuff on Arduinos, don't use the Arduino code, just write straight to the registers. Anyway, that enabled a fair bit of extra space and what I did was, I think I mentioned it in the, the previous video, where I have now got preset envelope types, just to make things easier. I've now got some preset waveforms. Now, one of the biggest problems with additive synths is basically just dialing all the things in, dialing all the, the sounds, the envelopes, everything. So by adding preset um, uh, waveforms, it basically means that you can start playing around with very little knowledge of how additive works, just having a little bit of fun. So to get straight into it, I'll show you what I mean. So if everyone remembers, long press, long press. We're up to our straight sine wave. Now I didn't bother putting a sine wave in as a predefined thing because you've already got the reset. The only difference is with a with the sine wave, you've now got to choose a predefined envelope. So say, with a little bit of attack and decay. It doesn't do anything other than just make the, the sine wave go in and out because there's no other filtering, because there's no other harmonics. Anyway, so no sine wave, but we have sawtooth, square, triangle. Triangle for the first time. It's not a very good triangle. Um, but it's, it sounds triangle-ish. Then we've got three, what I call, alternative waveforms. One's a pulse wave, the other's a reverse sawtooth, and I say reverse in terms of the harmonics are reversed, which gives it that resonant sort of sound. And the last one is a combination of a saw and a square wave, an octave up, which is pretty good for strings and things. So let's get into it. So. Previously, as you remember, I could go uh, hold down and I can get a... There's our trumpety sawtooth preset. So just to make sure, I'm, if we go to... There's our, our square wave. But what we can do is say, ah, oh, you know what? I really, really want um, to do a, a trumpety sound. I haven't got any in my presets. Oh, what do I do? That's a sawtooth with a sort of an, uh, a standard attack and decay. So what we can do now is, the same as before, you can choose any uh, oscillator button. I just use one because it's closer. One, level, but instead of short pressing, you can now long press. So if I long press, that's now got... <laughs> There's our sawtooth wave, and of course we can do the same thing. So we now attack, we can do a pluck. Okay, uh, I really wanted a square wave. So what we can now do, I mean, we've already got an oscillator set, so we'll just go um, volume square. Now, the one trick is it uses the previous oscillator, uh, previous envelope, but those envelopes were calculated for all of the heights of the previous waveform. Now, going between saw and square doesn't matter because they're the same heights for all the harmonics, which are actually available. But normally what you'd do is you'd come in and set the envelope afterwards. So... So that's basically two of our presets. So you can you can quite easily go to those sounds without having to preset them. Okay, third one. 
So let's go to our triangly type wave. Not the best triangle, a little bit lopsided, but it sounds more triangly than the sine wave just sounds like a single note. So we can say, oh, let's do a, a sort of a plucky sort of bass. So let's get a pluck envelope. Oops, no, I didn't. Yeah, that's a triangle type wave. Right, so now let's let's go to the weird waveforms. So let's go first to the bottom row. This is all harmonics on, very similar to the Hammond organ, but without any shaping, you end up with Well there you go. There's there's what happens when you don't change the envelope. So what we'll do is so you can see it's a, a pulse style wave. This sounds pretty good with a plucky envelope. So you go. But you can again play around with it. Now the second one, this is this is the weird one. It's actually all the harmonics of a sawtooth, but inverted, so that the nor the lowest frequency is the lowest, and the highest frequency is the highest. So if I come in here and I'll set just a normal instrument. So it has that sort of, if you listen to it, as the high frequency comes in, it has that sort of wah-wah of a, a resonant. So you could do something like have a longer pad. So it actually has close to, I mean, I haven't really tuned or anything, but it has close to a resonant filter sound. So, and just in case I didn't mention it, um, the blue meanie in the background, all we're doing, there's lots of whys because I was comparing it to normal um, subtracted synth sounds, but effectively this is just going straight in. We're feeding from the MIDI to CV from the blue meanie into there. We're putting that into the amplifier just to get a nicer square signal going straight into the filter and we're filtering at, I don't know, that's 8, 10, you know, 9 kilohertz. Oh, and also I did forget to say, in setting up the, the pulse width modulator myself, we're now on 64 kilohertz uh, fast PWM. Now, that means there's far less noise I mean, you can see the signal now. That's that's just going through the filter. It's it's pretty much perfectly smooth. There's no crunchy notes or things like that. Certain harmonics that would actually interfere with each other because we're now twice the speed. But anyway, so getting back, that's our sort of resonant. Again, if you wanted to, you could go a plucky sound. More sort of electric guitar. Old bass electric guitar. Alright, the last one, this is the the one, it's sort of a, a generic string. It's not as good as the cello patch I did because that was actually plugging in the, the exact um, harmonics, but if we were to go to the last one, so you can see how it's a it's sort of a either a sawtooth with a bit of a dink in the middle or so a wobbly sine wave. Let's put a normal instrument. Mm -hmm. 
Now that is a lot of stringed instruments actually have the two harmonics. So there's a sawtooth and then an octave up. There's actually a square wave at half the frequent, uh, half the amplitude. So that's what this one is. So you can quite happily a violin E sound. Not really. It's not really a real violin. I mean, you can put you know a heap of reverb. Okay, and again, maybe what we're going to do is actually go for a plucky sound, so... Yeah, it's that sort of... Maybe without too much reverb. But that's, that's another built-in one, so... If you think about it, you've got six different waveforms, six different preset um envelopes that you can of course tweak so for example uh, you know you can always go in there and edit one of the parameters this is just preset um, so that's before you actually get to your own preset waveforms so now you don't have to do things like oh i've got to store a trumpet because I, oh i want to get back to my trumpet oh, we'll leave that there um, so all we have to do is say okay one hard press we now got a sawtooth and now we want to say, okay, our trumpet uses the default instrument envelope. It says our trumpet, oh, we want our clarinetti sound. We can actually even, we know that the envelope's already set up because they're very similar. So we can just say, okay, let's go to a square. So you actually don't need to store those now, so you can now just store your really weird and wonderful ones. So anyway, that's really it. So we now have 64 kilohertz PWM, which has cleaned the signal up no end, um, which now means... Oh, you, can, oh, you can just see that in the keyboard. We've got now five octaves, so you go from bottom note to top note. So that's one, two, three, four, five full octaves. With quantization, you, you actually miss the bottom note sometimes because you have to quantize it to get make sure it's even all the way across. And I still haven't fixed up the A to D to account for the drift over the five octaves, but there are a lot of synthesizers that actually drift over five octaves anyway. So I'm not too unhappy with that. Um, so yeah, we've got the PWM updates and we've now got stored waveforms so you don't have to know anything about additive synthesis if you don't want to. If you want to make this little beastie yourself, um, you can pretty much do the main stuff you do with a standard subtractive synthesizer. You can choose a waveform, choose a filter, which is like your envelope and filter, and off you go. Create yourself a trumpety sound, create yourself a, a clarinetti sound, create yourself a string sound, a guitar sound. Um, you've still got the usual ones, so you can sort of come in and sort of do all the, the, in fact that was the piano, so that's, that's the bell. So it's still got the strange ones and this particular one because as you see it's the bell with the, oh, go on, with the um, vibrating second harmonic that's one that they're not preset you have to set those up yourself so if you want to go into the additive side knock yourself out but if you don't and you just want the nice simple trumpet use the default saw and the default envelope and there you go all right uh, hopefully this is a nice short one uh, just showing a new feature um, for those who are compiling their own one uh, by the time this comes up, it'll be updated on GitHub. So I just I keep fixing little things because I play. I actually probably use this synth more than any of my others now. So it's actually quite fun. It's very different, uh, and you can get some quite surprising sounds from such a simple, simple little device. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we shall see you in the next one. Okay, bye.